So, okay, so I think we, we can start, can we? <laughs> because it's high time we started. Um, so welcome to the talk of uh, Iskandar Ding. Uh, he'll uh, hold the talk about Xiao Erjing, right? Chinese with Perso-Arabic letters. Uh, if you want to ask any questions during this talk, uh, you can go to slido.com and input the uh, the code, which is hashtag Babel. Ah, okay. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Is it loud enough? Yeah? Good. Right, okay. So, um, Many people who study Chinese, who learn Chinese, or even speak Chinese as native, as their native language, don't really know that apart from the uh, Chinese characters, um, it is also written in um, the Persian Arabic script and also the Cyrillic script, but that's a different story. I'll mention it. So Chinese actually, well, Mandarin specifically, is written in three scripts um, culturally. Uh, Chinese characters, Persian Arabic, uh, called the Sharajing and um, the Cyrillic script in Central Asia. Now, um, before I talk about Sharajing, the writing system, um, it is useful perhaps to have a bit of background knowledge on the Muslims of China. Yeah, nowadays, it has become, unfortunately, um, a very popular topic on media, on the media, uh, not, for the, not for the right reasons. Um, the media can be confusing. A lot of people think that um, they confuse different terms such as Muslims in China, Uyghur, uh, Chinese Muslims, so on and so forth. And the media has led a lot of people, like in my experience, has led a lot of people to believe that there's only uh, uh, Muslims in China are called Uyghur and Chinese Muslims are Uyghur. Now, there are actually, so when the People's Republic was established in 1949. China copied the Soviet nationalist system. So a lot of ethnographers went around to China to kind of identify uh, ethnic groups. So the, the entire population was divided up into different ethnic groups called Zhu, um, which is the equivalent of nationalist in, um, in Russian and Milat in uh, Central Asian languages and Ottoman Turk. There are officially, um, I say officially because uh, there are subdivisions, for example, within the Uyghur people who are not sort of represented by the official um, uh, census. There are officially 10, well, 56 ethnic groups in China. 55 of them are considered officially as minorities. And um, 10 of the 55 minorities are uh, Muslims or predominantly Muslims or culturally Muslims. The first group, the biggest, the most populous group um, are the Hui people. Um, Hui is a Chinese term. I, I'll, I'll explain uh, what it means later. And then comes the Uyghurs. Uh, this is according to the 2013 uh, statistics. And then Kazakh, uh, Dongxiang, uh, which is a Mongolic Muslim group. Kyrgyz, Salar uh, is also a um, Turkic Muslim group. They belong to the Oruz speaking Muslims, so they're related to the Turkmens. Uh, of Turkmenistan, not of Iraq. Tajik, um, who are um, a group of Pamiri uh, people who are not re exactly related, well, as in close to um, Tajiks of um, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan and Afghanistan. And they're from the Pamir, Pamir um, mountains. Uzbek, and Bawang or Bonan um, is also a Mongolic Muslim group, and then Tatar. The Chinese Tatars came from uh, Kazan, uh, I think, uh, majority of them, uh, due to uh, via um, emigration. Um, this picture shows a dis roughly the distribution of Muslims all over China. As you can see, some provinces, the, the more west you go, the more mus uh, Muslim population you can find. And. Um, so Muslims don't just come from one place in China. That's another misconception. Um, they, they are not, not all Uyghurs. They're not all from Xinjiang or uh, East Turkestan, Sharqi Turkestan. Um, they're everywhere in China. But some provinces have fewer Muslims than others. Now, the Hui people. Uh, so the biggest uh, uh, Muslim group in China 
Um, I would like to ask Slavic speakers to kind of shut that part of your brain, to kind of avoid associating the Chinese romanization. The pronunciation is Hui. Um, it's a tri, triphthong, I think. And um, in Chinese, it means to return. But the term mostly, so like there's a folk etymology with uh, why Muslims are called, why Chinese speaking Muslims are called Hui. Um, oh, it's because they, when, when our ancestors came from um, what is now the Middle East and Central Asia, people wanted us to go back. But that's, that's folk etymology. Uh, it's most likely from the word for Uyghur, actually, which in, in classical Chinese was, I'm not doing the classical Chinese pronunciation, the modern Mandarin pronunciation, Hui Hu, uh, which was the Chinese term for Uyghur, ancient Uyghurs, so um, before like pre-Islamic Uyghurs, who were a different group of people. Modern Uyghurs didn't call themselves Uyghur for a long time until the 19th century, until nationalism started all over the world, and the, the ancient term got revived. So, uh, Hui Hu was the Chinese term for ancient Uyghurs, and the first syllable was picked to designate foreigners in general, because um, uh, the ancient Chinese had most dealings with the ancient Uyghurs on the Silk Road. And then other, um, other foreigners came, and Hui suddenly, well, uh, gradually became the uh, general designation for foreigners coming from the West. But since most foreigners um, from the 13th and 14th century on, so that was during the, the Mongol Empire, uh, in China were Persian or Arabic speaking Muslims, um, Hui became the designation for Muslims. Now also, because, because the Jewish population in China uh, during that time also came from uh, Persian speaking areas of Samarkand and Bukhara, uh, which are now in, in Uzbekistan and also probably Iran as well, um, the Jews were also included uh, in the Hui population. But the majority of the Hui's were, well, the majority of the people, Muslims, who Chinese people call Hui, were Muslim. Now, um, so the, the, the term Hui became identified with um, Islam, and Islam traditionally is called Hui Jiao. Uh, Hui, the, the Hui religion, it is still widely used in um, in places which are in places untouched by um, modern sort of PRC uh, culture. So in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, in Macau, in Malaysia and Singapore, people would uh, refer to uh, Islam as Hui Jiao, whereas in China it has become Islam Jiao, which is closer to the original. And interestingly, because the lingua franca of Muslims in the past, uh, especially in the 13th and 14th and 15th, a bit into the 16th century, was Persian. Um, and Persian was the lingua franca for Muslims of the East. That is Iran and Afghanistan, Northern India and Central Asia. So um, Persian was called the Hui language, the Muslim language. And um, uh, after, um, the 1950s, so after the ethnicization of China, the categorization of Ch Chinese peoples into different ethnicities in mainland China, uh, Hui, so Hui was the name for all Muslims in China throughout history, but after the 1950s, it came to designate specifically Chinese-speaking or Sinophone Muslims, and Muslims whose Ancestors came from elsewhere, but they have been uh, assimilated through intermarriage and so on and so forth, a, a, a process of uh, uh, Yeah, so um, Hui people's language now is, well, mother tongue is Chinese, different Chinese dialects, uh, albeit with uh, a few Persian Arabic words, especially in religious settings uh, dotted here and there. Um, there was an exodus of Hui people to Central Asia following the Hui Revolt, uh, or the Dungang Revolt, uh, in the 19th century. And these people settled in, mo mostly in um, modern-day Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, and also a bit in Uzbekistan. And Central Asians call uh, Chinese-speaking Muslims traditionally Dungang. Um, I don't really know where that word comes from, but, um, but Hui people are known as Dungans in Central Asia. And these Hui people came 
the majority of them came from western parts of China, uh, here and there, and also from Xinjiang. Um, so they are called Dunggans. But internally, they refer to themselves as Huizu. Um, and uh, because the Soviet Union had this policy of, oh, every nationalist has to have its own language, own set of customs, and so on and so forth, uh, the language spoken by the emigres was standardized during the Soviet Union um, into what is called Dungansky Yazik. If you, if you look it up, you can, you can see it. It is essentially Northwestern Mandarin, standardized, but written in Cyrillic. But I won't talk about this today. Um, and the conclusion is that, uh, can you see the bottom here? Yeah, sorry, the, the, I used a different font, but it didn't show up. Um, Hui is not the same as Chinese Muslims or China's Muslims, because Chinese Muslims depends on what you see as Chinese, right? If you see Chinese as an ethnic term, then not really, because the Hui are not uh, ethnically Chinese, although we have Chinese ancestry. Chinese converts to Islam do not count as Hui. And, but if you see Chinese as a, as a civic term, then Chinese Muslims also designate Uyghur, Kazakh, and Tatar, and so on and so forth. Um, now, the topic is uh, Shara Jing, which is, ha which is a writing system used by Hui people uh, to represent Chinese sounds. And it's very similar to um, what, the, what they used to do in, in what's, what's, the, what's the term in, in Spain, that they used to write romance, Ibero-Romance with um, uh, Arabic script, and also the Arebica used, in, uh, used by South Slavic Muslims, by, by Bosniaks. Um, this is this, essentially the same thing. Um, yeah, I already mentioned the language of the Hui. Um, culturally, Arabic and Persian have always been very, uh, very important in our communities. And with a, a lot of educated people traditionally, they, they would know Arabic. They would actually write in Arabic and Chinese, but also write, oh, sorry, Arabic and Persian, but also Chinese in um, the script, because this is seen as our native script. And, um, and it's also easier to render loan words um, if you write in Arabic, well, personal Arabic script. Um, Sharazi means little children's classic, uh, literally. It was invent, well, devised to help children in religious schools, uh, in madaris, in madrasas, uh, develop literacy through the Quran and other religious texts. So a lot of people actually didn't need to learn how to re read and write Chinese uh, in our communities, um, albeit it, it was enough to speak it already. Um, in terms of literary communication, people would write in this script because it's much easier uh, to learn than, than Chinese uh, characters. Unfortunately, it's, it's now largely obsolete because everyone, well, um, almost uh, many, many people, far more people in China now are literate in the, in the, in the characters, so um, people don't use Xiaojing anymore in our communities. Now, uh, I have taken, so if you know um, Arabic, the Arabic script, there are a few uh, special characters and or Arabic letters which are pronounced differently in, um, uh, in this system, in the system of Sharajin. I haven't put the letters w which are pronounced the same. Um, a few examples, for example, the that uh, the, 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 the with um, four dots, um, this is to um, render the Chinese sound ch, so a bit palatalized um, ch, um, or the Polish C with the uh, accent aigu. And um, what else is interesting? I think the 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 is um, in Arabic or the in Persian is pronounced as t. Uh, it's used to represent the t sound. Sorry, the sound in in in, in Chinese. Um, there's a scene with a dot above. I really couldn't find that special character. So the dot is next door, uh, is, to, is to represent the Chinese sir sound, but a bit of harsh, hard sir sound, so unpalatalized sir, unlike, unlike the normal scene, which represents the pal palatalized. Um, and um, there's an invention, for example, the uh, sad, uh, this, is, this Arabic letter is called sad, um, which just represents a normal sir in, in, in Chinese. But the sat with two, uh, th uh, three dots above, uh, this is not seen elsewhere, I think. Um, it represents the tse, uh sound 
in um, Chinese. And the Ain is basically just uh, Shua. And um, the Qaf is used to represent um, either the Ker sound or the Ger sound uh, in Shaarajim. Um, going back in history, kind of, this is uh, a, a, well, one of the um, characteristics of Shaarajim is that it not only writes Chinese, sort of sound to sound, um, it also uses a rich system of heterograms. So um, going back to history, um, heterograms have been uh, widely used in different civilizations. For example, Middle Persian, well, the Hittites used a lot of Sumerograms and, and um, the Middle, uh, the, well, the Sasanians, um, Sasanian Persians, when they wrote their language Middle Persian or Pahlavi, they used, they not only wrote the sounds, a lot of words they would write in Aramaic, but pronounce in uh, Middle Persian. For example, this sentence, Enge ti puraz ohramazda manke edar padra mishn ziwend. There are four, five words in red, which, this is the transliteration. Well, um, no, this is the transliteration. This is the trans. Trans this is a transcription, this is a transliteration. The transliteration is in Persian, but all these, um, all, the, all the capital letters in the transcription um, are Aramaic words, so Semitic words. Zne, uh, I don't know how it's pronounced, um, in Aramaic means this, and it corresponds to the native Persian word N. So when people see this, they would actually, they see Zne, but they would actually say N. Uh, Geti is the world. So this world is full of um, the creations of uh, Ahura Mazda, which live, which here live with um, joy. And the word from, as in Persian, is also represented by a, um, a heterogram, an Arameogram, uh, M, written as MN, so Min, I think, Min, min in Arabic, I think Men in Syriac. Um, and then uh, this represents uh, the, well, that, or which, and um, this, I, I, I don't know the etymologies actually in Aramaic, but uh, just give an idea that this is kind of a writing system, which is also similar to the kanji system in Japanese, really. Um, people who have learned Japanese definitely know that you can read, Jap you can read kanji, so Chinese characters, uh, in two ways. One of them is the onyomi, the other one's kunyomi. The kunyomi is the native Japanese um, pronunciation of the word, but represented by, so you see the character, um, but you don't pronounce it in the original Middle Chinese way. You would pronounce it in the, um, in a native way. And um, so this is the system of he uh, heterograms. Um, similarly, Shaarajin uses perso-arabograms, uses um, heterograms to write uh, Chinese. Um, one of the uses is um, for the semantic values of the Arabic and Persian words themselves. For example, the word uh, tamam, I'm pronouncing in the Persian way, tamam in Arabic pronunciation, which means complete uh, in the original personal Arabic meaning. And the Chinese translation, the Chinese word for complete is chen. And um, so in a lot of Chinese words that contain chen, the chen part uh, is substituted by the um, perso Arabic word. Now here it says, for example, tamam uh, mui is actually chen mei, uh, which means completely beautiful or perfect. Sorry. Tamam cai which is actually chen cai. So when people see tamam cai, they'll actually pronounce as chen cai because they know that tamam means uh, chen, and then so on and so forth. Now, there's uh, this particular example, um, tamam yan, which actually doesn't really correspond to any Chinese word. So what is this? This is the second use of Perso Arabic words, which I think is unique um, in, the, um, in the history of heterograms for their phonetic values only. Um, for example, well, so the 
tamam yen. Um, I already said that tamam means complete in Arabic, and then it corresponds to the Chinese word chen, which means complete. Sorry, um, but you know Chinese has a lot of a lot of uh, homophones. So the word for spring, so as in um, if you know Persian chashma, um, like hot spring, is also pronounced as chen. So the word which originally in Arabic mean, uh, means complete now comes to represent a word in Chinese which sounds the same as this Chinese translation but has a completely different meaning, i.e. Uh, spring. So when you say tamam, uh, tamam yen, it has nothing to do with complete. This tamam here does not go to uh, complete, it goes to the spring. So chen yen is the Chinese word for the whole of spring, the whole of water, so spring ai. Um, another example would be the Persian word pai, which means foot, and the, the corresponding, the synonymous Chinese word would be jiao. Um, but because the word for corner also uh, is also pronounced as jiao, with the same tone as well, um, it's used in all the words that, um, that have the, 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 the character, well, that have the, the word corner in it. For example, binjiao, which means sideburns, so the corner of your temple. And um, there is an extraordinary um, example which I came across. So it doesn't, so the personal arabograms don't just represent entire words, they can actually on, only represent one syllable. Really, so the Persian word for moon is ma, and that obviously um, can be used for the Chinese concept of moon or, or a month. But because now this graph of ma of the Persian ma, uh, this is associated with this sound, the u sound in Chinese. When you write the Chinese word for boot, for example, like as in what you wear you write the first consonant uh, out uh, in sort of transliteration, but the second part of, this, the, uh, of the word, which itself doesn't have any meaning, is written with this graph. So you, you, if you, you sort of um, practic you're pr practically separating sort of um, syllables. Well, there's only one syllable here, but you know what I mean. Um, yes. Let's do some practice now. Um, there's a, so ji shi, very simply called ji shi, or, um, or records, is a book about um, the Dunggang Revolt in the 19th century, and it was written in uh, Xiaorijin, written in Chinese, but with a, a lot of heterograms. For example, the opening sentence tells you the year when things started to um, when tensions started to um, uh, rise between the Chinese people and Chinese people who, uh, with, who um, Muslims refer to as kafir um, and the Muslim population of northwestern China. Um, if, you, if you were to read it out um, sort of phonetically, this says, Shan Maghrib, Tunji, Yuan, Sala, Sigia, the sala do hashtma. But it actually represents this sentence in Chinese. If you know Chinese, well, I put, I put the pinyin here. Shanxi tong zhi yuan yan, shi jia zi nian, er ba yue. All the words in red are represented by heterograms. Maghrib is the Arabic word for the West. So Shanxi is, um, is a province in China. The second uh, character of the name of the province is Xi, which means West. So you use the Arabic uh, word, which is not pronounced as Xi, it's pronounced as Maghrib, to represent Xi. Shan is the phonetic uh, transliteration. Shan Maghrib is actually Shan Xi. Tongji, Tongzhi, actually, uh, who was a Manchu emperor at, ruling at the time, and um, uh, sala is the Persian word for, for year. So you see sala, you, you read nian uh, in Chinese, and it appears again. And then the numbers are all in Persian, uh, albeit with Chinese grammar. So, um, R is du in Persian, hasht is eight, and ma would be um, 
month. So this is how, how it works. So um, literate people, like people literate in Shah Rajin at the time, they would see this sentence and they, if they were to read it out, they would say Shanxi Tongzhi Yuan Yin, well, probably with the local accent, not in modern Mandarin. Uh, the next sentence, um, if, you read it, if you read it out uh, phonetically, Hamako Firun, San Liao, Sesat Kofir Nayak Mu'amin. Taman Dil Gyan Liao, I Kafirun Ta Luan, Jam Kasidid Mu'amin Nachu, Katala Liao Bao Amir. Doesn't make sense to, to, to anyone, as I, I think, because you have to read it out in this way. Chenbu Kafir, Suan Le, Sanbai Kafir. How do I do this? Ah, sorry. Um, uh huh. Na yi mu ming, ta men xin jian le yi ka fei er tuan lian, ji he ren men jian mu ming na zhu, sha le bao guan. All non-believers uh, counted 300 non-believers to, to fight against one believer. They newly organized the troop, gathering people and ordering them to kill any believer that they saw and report to the authorities. Interesting how the word for authorities is Amir in Arabic. Um, well, as you're saying, all the, um, all the Chinese words in red are represented, especially the number here, uh, Sesad, 300, um, are represented by personal Arabic words. But it doesn't have to be that way because you see the words, uh, the Chinese word for one, so I. Here it's represented by a, the, the, the Persian word yak, but here it's represented phonetically. Okay. okay, so, um, which means that there's, there's certain fluidity. You, you, you don't have to use personal Arabic words. And as with a lot of um, hetero, uh, system, writing systems which do use heterograms, uh, Middle Persian as well, you don't have to use, you, it, you can very well represent the, um, uh, your own language with your own writing, with the, with the um, phonetic spelling. But, um, I've been fascinated by heterograms for a long time. Why actually do people use foreign, even, you know, foreign, not just words, but graphs to represent native, um, native concept, well, native words? And when you read it, you actually read it out. You don't read it out in a, in a foreign way anyway. So this is a question for everyone to kind of think about. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful oh, talk and very interesting talk. Um, well, so I encourage you to ask questions uh, once again using the slido.com website and using the hashtag B-A-B-E-L Babel. So we don't have any questions yet. Oh, we have the first question, so <laughs> um, please do read the question oh, and yes. <laughs> answer. The question is, is the current spoken form of the Hualong dialect of Qinghai province, Qinghai uh, Hualong Fangyan, the dialect which preserves the most personal Arabic elements any, in any, among any dialects? Uh, yes, um, in a way, but no as well, because you can't really quantify. Unfortunately, not a lot of serious studies have been done on the actual fluent use of Perso Arabic words in actual sp uh, speaking, uh, loan words into the uh, Muslim Chinese dialects. Um, we can't really say it, whether it's the most, but it does use uh, an enormous amount of um, Perso Arabic elements. Uh, and the second question: tones not written at all. Can these uh, can this lead to confusion? No, the tones are not written at all. Um, can this lead to confusion, possibly to people who are not familiar with the, with the writing system? I imagine um, this is just like a lot of writing systems which don't write vowels, or short vowels, for example. A lot of Semitic scripts don't write short vowels, but um, for the native speakers, it's completely fine. And, um, you know, Chinese characters also don't write uh, tones when you look at the character, you don't, but no one has problem with um, any tone. 
So can this lead to, con uh, this lead to confusion? I, I suppose so, yes. Even to native speakers in Chinese who know Chinese characters, sometimes people get, get confused, but very rarely. Next question, do you also use terms in the Persian Arabic language similar to Chinese? Do who? Do you also, if you mean Hui people, um, well, it, Pers Persian Arabic don't have terms, um, so if the you refer, uh, refers to uh, speaker, speakers of Persian Arabic, then no. Um, do we, when we use Persian Arabic words, uh, we put tones on them? Yes and no. There is a bit of tonality to it. For example, um, kafir, we'll say kafir. Um, and a lot of people like from Western China um, call onion uh, piaz. So the Persian was piaz. Uh, so there is a kind of transposition of Chinese tonality onto Persian Arabic words, but it's not standardized when we use um, Persian Arabic words. Do all people who live in China, brackets, even though they belong to different ethnic and language groups, speak Putonghua, i.e. Mandarin, brackets, simplified Chinese. Um, first of all, Mandarin is not simplified Chinese. Simplified, simplified refers to the script. Um, the, the Chinese government in the 1950s, I think, well, 1960s, um, simplified a lot of Chinese, not all of Chinese characters, but um, I would say after half of Chinese characters, and which still look the same as, uh, look very similar to, traditional, to their traditional counterpart. So that's one thing. Uh, do all people who live in China, even they belong to, a lot of people can. Um, I would say the majority, majority of Chinese citizens, or the citizens of um, the People's Republic, can speak Mandarin, but obviously with influence, heavy influence sometimes, with their own um, dialects and regional languages. Uh, the non-Chinese ethnic groups, such as the Uyghurs and um, uh, Mongols and uh, Tibetans and so on and so forth, uh, many of them uh, don't speak Chinese. Um, next question, are there many examples of borrowings of spoken words and not just script characters from Persian Arab? With borrowings of spoken words. Yes, um, especially when it comes to religious terms. Um, for example, we don't say prayer. Well, um, well, people do say prayer. Li um, bai in Chinese, uh, but Muslims say namaz, which is from uh, namaz uh, in in Persian, also related to the Sanskrit word namaz, which gives you namaste. But that's a different topic. Um, but um, not a lot in everyday speech. Why is it that personal Arabic that loans mu'min, believer, and kafirun, which actually the plural, uh, non-believers, yet yeah, weren't written with heterographs? Perhaps they were in a way. No, because these are seen. These are actually loan words, not um, heterographs or, or heterograms. Because in normal conversation, people will say mu'min. Uh, the Chinese word is actually mumin and kafir. So I don't think the scribe um, considered them to be, some, to be foreign words already in the culture. Um, is kanji the only heterogram that is widely used as it is? Why are the other heterograms dying, or how did kanji survive this long? I don't know. Um, I, I'm not an expert on uh, uh, heterograms like, as a system per se. I checked everywhere. Couldn't, I haven't been able to find a good study on the use of heterograms across the world. But when you think about it, um, you can kind of call the loan words, no, this is a very, very bold statement. Uh, in a lot of Islamic languages, did they start as heterograms and then, turned in, and then later turned into loan words per se? So in early sort of Persian, Modern Persian was a first tested um, in, as a literal language in the 8th century. And um, they started to write Persian with Arabic scripts. And then there were uh, a few Persian, uh, Arabic words there. Given the long history of um, Persians, well, Iranians, using heterograms, um, pre-Islamically, it was Arameograms. Did they initially just write the Arabic words and pronounce, and, and pro uh, and pronounce them um, in Persian, 
and then these Arabic words became integrated into the, into the system? I don't know. That's a very bold statement. Uh, answer is I don't know. Are there materials or websites to learn Shahriji? No. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll write one. There is a dictionary, but you have to know Chinese to... Uh, to um, it's, also, it's, it's still a very, very under-researched topic because for a long time, a lot of our documents are in people's homes and we kind of keep them as sort of... We don't want other people to, um, to, 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 to get our secret. That's precisely, I think, why people wrote in, um, in personal Arabic. We didn't want other Chinese speakers to, to, to um, sort of meddle with our business, I suppose. Um, so the, the research is scarce, and um, there are a few, few books in Chinese which talk about Xiaojin, but not like a sort of um, textbook. Um, how early did um, Islamic religious texts appear in Chinese? Very early on, I would say, when Islam first came to China in the 9th century, um, that's uh, the common era, um, already there were Islamic texts in Chinese. But the, um, um, but the mass production, obviously, uh, was in the Min dynasty, so the dynasty that came after uh, the Mongol Empire. The Hui ethnicity is assumed to be more sinicized, to be more sinicized Turkic population. However, there seems to be more personal Arabic loan words. Is this colloquial or a literal one? Um, over, um, what a Hui person is and whether, after all, we are one people because China is huge and um, Muslims, Hui people are everywhere. In every province you can find Hui people. Obviously, there's more density the further west you go. And which means that people definitely have different, even the foreign stock has different origins. From the south, from the east, the, the, the east coast, people are more sort of Persian Arabic, well, originally, and from the south. And, but in central China, central northern China, there's definitely Arabic and Persian elements, but there's, of course, a lot of Turkic and Mongolic um, uh, mixtures as well. So, uh, it is strictly very difficult to, uh, strictly speaking, very difficult to generalize about the ethnogenesis of Hui people. But one thing that is quite clear is that uh, the ancestors, the majority of ancestors um, of Hui people, before sort of uh, assimilation, uh, spoke Persian. The first systematic um, Persian grammar was actually written by a Hui person in Shandong province, which is near Korea, um, in Persian in the 17th century. So as, as, as to what that means for, for the use of Persian in the community, it, uh, we need more research, but yeah. How, there seems to be more personal Arabic loan words. Well, already these are, well, I wouldn't say um, we use more personal Arabic words in our daily conversation than, um, than Turkic populations. Uyghur is full of personal Arabic words, and these are actually loan words into the system. Whereas um, we use personal Arabic words specifically for um, cultural, religious sort of um, concept. Um, and when people write Shaharji, if they do, these are actual heterograms, not lowering words. Um, do you speak Farsi? Baleman, Farsi gap means unknown. What are other religions that are widely spread through China? Do you feel Islam influences the strong? No. Um, throughout Chinese history, I don't, I, I don't think any religion has had as profound influence on China, on Chinese civilization as Buddhism, uh, which also came from elsewhere. And the combination of Buddhism and Taoism uh, spiritually is very, very influential, has been uh, very influential in Chinese society. Islam obviously def has been bigger than people usually know. Um, it has had a very, very important history in Chinese history. Um, apart from Islam, there were all sorts of religions, especially under the, especially under the Mongols. Um, there were Manichaeism, there was Manichaeism, Judaism, Manichaeism, um, also Nestorian Christianity, Hinduism, all found uh, in China. Zoroastrianism, definitely, uh, in China, but the spread was limited. So now, currently, I think the biggest religion would be 
Buddhism or some sort of quasi-Buddhism and Taoism, I don't know which one comes uh, at the top, and then Islam, I would say. What was your initial spark to do research about Shaorism? Well, it's my culture. <laughs> like, so this is e an easy question. What, res we, uh, what um, resources are there to learn this script? Um, I think I already answered this question. There was a similar question. Are there recent developments to Shaorism? Maybe quirky ways to write modern loan words. No, it's, um, it's kind of a fossilized system. It was, uh, it's a system which has had a lot of history, and, if, and also not many people use it anymore, so there definitely isn't modern de recent developments to the, um, to the script. It's a script, though. It's not a separate language, although there is a... Um, I was going to talk about it, but then I thought it, was, it would be um, another topic. There's a, there's a phenomenon called a Jing Tang Yu, Madrasa language, um, which is... Chi which came from the Chinese translation of the Quran and the, and the Hadith, the Hawadith, um, whereby uh, people imitate Arabic syntax. So you're literally translating Arabic. So Arabic have, ha, has a lot of grammatical words which don't have equivalents in, Chi in Chinese. But in this particular uh, 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 madrasa language, you have that the, tri the tri Chinese syntax imitates. Arabic syntax, so you have a, have a sort of translation for um, particles such as inna uh, in Arabic, and that's a different topic. So that does influence the, uh, uh, the, gra the grammar a bit. For those who know Chinese, um, the slides that you saw, the quotes, um, you may have noticed that the grammar was a little bit funny, because that was the Mandarin, that, that is the Mandarin spoken in the 19th century in northwestern China, before even there was a standardized Mandarin. So, and these people would probably speak Persian Arabic very well, um, not as their native languages, but they would have um, a sort of equal facility with Persian Arabic, and that definitely would interfere with how they uh, spoke Chinese. Is there any resources to learn Uyghur? Yes, there's a, uh, there's a lot now. Um, I can, how can I recommend this? Can I write to the, the, the polyglot um, chat or something? I can recommend loads of Uyghur um, textbooks these days. Or even just do a, a simple YouTube search. You'll find people teaching Uyghur. Did, sorry. Ah. did you learn the system as a child or did you decide to learn research it later? Do children learn it at first or second script compared to Chinese, Chinese characters? I didn't learn it. That I didn't learn Shaorism. I, I learned uh, the Arabic script when I was a child, um, but, not Shara, but not particularly using China, uh, uh, Arabic, the Arabic script to write Chinese. So I didn't learn Shaorism as a child. I, I decided to learn it and research it later. Um, so, no, I, I wouldn't think people, like children, still learn it now, although in conservative um, communities, they may. How do you learn Chinese? Is it your second language? No, it's my first language, so I learned it from okay. my family. Okay, so yeah. this was actually our last question because we've already out of time. So thank you very much for participating in this wonderful talk of our guest. Thanks very much. A big applause. And see you in 15 minutes.